Hello guys, welcome to uh, another video. In this one we will be using a free plugin. It's called the uh, Jet Form Builder. Um, they have some paid options as well, but with the free version you can do a lot of stuff. Um, it will be a short video. I'm not going to explain everything about the Jet Form Builder, but I'm going to show you how you can use the Jet Form Builder to make a front-end form, let's say. And the form can be used for uh, a lot of things. And in this video we will be using it to enable our clients to update posts or add posts from the front end so if you don't want your users to like I'm seeing here the back end if you don't want them to have access to the back end but still they have to be able to update some posts you can uh, set it up so that they can do it in the front end and we're going to use you see it here the jet form builder uh, so you can just click on add new to search jet form builder and it will pop up it's a free one and just install it yeah so what I, what do I have? It's the same uh, if you watched my last two videos. There I showed how you could make a dynamic table that was sorted by date chronologically and some other uh, cool stuff. So check it out if you want to, because I'm using the same uh, table with the same custom post type, the courses. Yeah? So let me open up so you can see I have here a couple of courses, uh, number one, two, three, four, five, six, and uh, still again a tree just doesn't really matter it's just to show you um and they have some meta fields let me show you so they have a description they have a starting date and they have an end date and a title of course and they are displayed on a page in a table let me show you oh this is the back end let me show you the page itself so this is how it's displayed and you see five six two here they are in a different order than the publishing order because they are sorted by date and this is something you can view in my uh, last video so check it out if you want some more info about this so what i'm going to do i'm going to build a um, form i'm going to put the form here and users, if they go to this page and they are logged in, they will see this form and they can put in the course name, a starting date and an end date, click on publish and then it will be inserted inside of the table and also of course in the back end. But for now we'll, uh, we'll make it so or we'll, um, the goal is that our clients can do this from the front end and they don't have to click on this and then search here for courses and add them like this, okay? So let me go to my Jet Form Builder we're going to have to add a new one let's remove this one um, and we're going to remove this first part here this is useful when you want them to be able to update a uh, already existing post but this is not the, the use case for this video so i can show you in another video if you guys want to i'm just going to remove the default things here um, add a title so let's say front end at a course doesn't really matter so just to, to make it clear for myself um, and the action button is already here so we are going to use this one later on but i'm first going to add my fields so i'm going to insert it before and i'm going to if you don't not sure and you want to see all of them you can click on the plus browse all and then you have the jet form fields and you have them all here so you have a lot of options the first thing i need is just a normal text field this is the one i'm going to call this the uh, title this will be titled automatically as well uh, and it's just going to be a text um, if you want to you can make this an input mask and some other stuff but i'm not going to use this a placeholder if you want them uh, put your title here if you want to make it a bit more obvious you see it's displayed inside so you can do some uh, stuff here only for logged in users you can put in here um, so that only people that are logged in can see this uh, field. You can al also do this a different way where the whole form is just displayed only for logged in users. Um, so I'm not going to use this now, uh, but you could also uh, check it here. Yeah? So only logged in users will be able to see this form or this value. Yeah? Then let's make it required as well. So they have to put something in, insert after. I'm going to search for the text area field. This is going to be my description. Description can also be required. Then insert a new one. This is going to be a date block or date field, I should say. Uh, this is going to be the starting date is also required. Let's put a little dash in between. Starting date starting date yeah like this then 
let's make a new one another date field the end date is the one we still need and date okay so we have everything we are going to put is required as well one thing we should check here is is timestamp you all if you saw my last two videos you saw that i've also also used is timestamp this is um, an easy way to um, make it if I, if, I, if I don't check this one in the table it won't be um, in a chronological order this has to be enabled to to make it so that it can be um, that it can be sorted by date okay so we have everything we have our title our description starting date and end date this is the thing if I go to my post types my courses you see I need to have a the the title and then a description starting date and an end date so these are the four things they have to fill in so this can be different of course um, if you have a different post type maybe with more more fields that have to be filled in but i have the title the description starting and end date and then the most important thing is then setting up the actions from the from the button here so this is okay so it should be submitting the form and um, let me go to this part here the jet form uh, settings we're going to make it a Ajax. This makes it, this doesn't refresh refresh the page whenever they click on update. Uh, I like this more. Um, safety, and you can put this on if you want to protect more your uh, WordPress form, but I'm not going to do it because it's just for a, uh, to show captcha settings you can also then you have to uh, get site key and secret key uh, something you can do for free it's a google service you can put this on as well so now you see the post submit actions this is the one we have to click on this is the one that's by default uh, here send email you can send an email so every time they somebody posts something you can make it so that you get a notification there has been uh, published a new course for example but i'm going to remove this one and i'm going to add a new action and it should be insert or update the post in this case it will only be working to insert a new post it won't be updating an existing one and now we have to click on the pencil or then click on the action post type we should check our courses this is the one that i've set up now the post status can be immediately published, but you can also uh, see uh, a draft or a private if you don't want it to be immediately published and you want to have uh, the you ha want to control it first. For example, you can uh, check something here pending review, for example, that you get a notification that there is a new post, but you still have to accept it. Uh, for example, if a lot of people have access to your site and they make posts for you and you want to be the one that controls the, the one that, that get published, you can do this like this. But I'm going to go with publish now now we have to just make sure that we map every field so these these are the fields of my form and we have to make sure that they are mapped with the right fields um, of my custom post type so the title should just be the title this is easy the post title the description should be a post meta field so we're going to post meta and we have to put in the value ourselves so that's why i've put it open here and the uh, value name id is description like this so i'm just going to copy and paste starting date same thing the post meta and should also be put in here so let's check it close this one starting date this is the one that i need or i can copy paste to make sure that i'm no, not making mistakes let's go and I'm post meta again for the end date and this is something that I can copy again to just be sure should be this command C on Mac command V so now they are mapped with everything the, it will be a new course it will be immediately published and we have mapped everything like it should update this and publish our form now let's go to the pages and then to my table page and then this table is visible for my visitors of the website now i can use for example a row layout from the cadence suite and then i can um, set up some visibility here i have um, visibility well i clicked on the wrong one visibility settings this is the settings of the block the row layout block of cadence visibility um i can s put it like this hide from logged out users so people that are not logged in won't see everything that's within this row layout and if i now put in the jet form 
inside of this row layout it will be hidden from people that are logged out so this is also an option to only make it visible for um, logged in users yeah i'm not going to use it but just i wanted to show you yeah if you want it to be hidden yeah let's so if you want to, to put in the jet form uh, you have to click on the jet form and uh, then please select form to show to the right side this is the one there is only one that i've created so this is the one that i want the fields layout you can change some stuff here if you want to um, and submit deep type was uh, i put it on ax so it's going to take it over because it's on default but you can still change it here let's click on update and now it will be available yeah the third way, so the first way was uh, inside of the form settings themselves, you could put in the visibility of each field individually. The second thing was with the row layout of cadence. And then the third thing is the little icon here, dynamic visibility. And this is an option that's added by the Jet Engine plugin as well, where you can click on enable and then show element if condition met, met or height elements. And then add new condition user is not logged in for example then it should be hidden and that's also a way to um, make it custom visibility set, uh, set the custom visibility things okay so there are three different ways there are more ways but this, these are three easy ways okay so this is okay let's view my page and now you see title, description, starting date, end date, they are just below our table. Of course, this doesn't look really cool uh, because it's really close. It's not really obvious where my table starts or ends and where my form begins. So you can make it a little bit uh, more obvious. And then I would use maybe a cadence row layout because you can easily put some uh, margin and padding inside of it. Um, but I could also, for example, if I just want to do it fast, insert before, a heading um, at a new course for example and then I still have to put in if I want it to be the same visibility uh, hit hide the element if the user is not logged in for example so then I have to set this as well yeah so just that it's not showing up um, when people don't have to see it. Let's go back to my page. And now you have a little more clarity where the table ends and where my form begins. Let's check if it works. Course front end, let's call it, because it's been added from the front end, some random description. Starting date, let's see. I'm gonna put something in between the 4th and the 17th of November, for example. Let's click on the calendar, go to November. Let's go with the 9th of November and the end date can be the 10th of November, for example. So we will see if I click on submit, form successfully submitted. You can also change this, uh, this message if you want to. But now you see it's not uh, by default, it's not here. I don't see anything but the course front end as name. That's because it's Ajax, but it's not. Um, it has to be reloaded the page before it will be displayed. So let's reload. And now you see something changed here. Course front end is added inside of the table, 9th of November until the 10th of November. And you see it's in the right order because it's added chronologically as well. So this is a really easy way for your clients to be able to add something inside of a table or something uh, else dynamically uh, without having to access the backend. You can also, of course, put this form I've already done, done this in the in the past where I made a custom dashboard and the dashboard contained all of the forms um, where they could add a new course, for example, uh, edit an existing one um, and some other stuff uh, without having to go to the to the table page themselves. So that's also an option and it's a little bit more um, fancy because then they have like a really nice looking front end dashboard that you've made for, for your clients. If you want a guide to make to how to do that, then uh, to leave a comment and uh, I will be happy to provide you with a guide to them. Okay, so test it out um, and hopefully this will be helpful for your next uh, project. Yeah? Um, and if you want to see how I've made this chronologically, then uh, just check my last two videos. They are quite short and they are contain a lot of useful info where you can uh, make a table like this. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one. Thank you.